Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Einstein and I'm talking about books. And in this video, I'm talking about the books I read in June. Since this video is about books, I will start with the first one of those and that's Flower Valley by Nivea Corneliusen. She's an author from Greenland and this actually won the Nordic Council Literature Prize last year. So this one has been on my wish list for quite some time. And the thing that intrigued me was actually one journalist saying that if Greenland were to win this prize, it should be now. So naturally, I thought that this book really had to be something. This book is about a young gay woman living on Greenland and one day she is going to Denmark to study at the university. Flower Valley refers to a place where they lay flowers for people who has committed suicide. And this is the major theme of this novel, together with prejudices and being a gay on Greenland. I thought reading about suicide rates would be very interesting. And it was, but I did not care for the main character at all. But that didn't matter as much, even though we're following her train of thought through this novel. It might just be that the main character makes a lot of poor choices and does a lot of stupid things. And in funny books I quite enjoy it, but in serious books I get so annoyed and frustrated sometimes. I did not know that much about Greenland, so just the fact that I learned something new about that place I found interesting. But also it's kind of a weird place to learn about, because it's so rural, it's such harsh living conditions, it's dark, and all these things made an interesting atmosphere for me as a reader. Because the place is described very well, and we get to know some of the people that commit suicide and the stories behind a lot of the people living there. Also, I must say that this is one of the most new books I've read. Many books newly published will act older because they're sort of timeless. But this is really in our time. And there's a lot of things being said and done by the main character that could not have been done 10 years ago. So that I really enjoyed. I think this is the most fresh book I've read in quite some time. So I do recommend this book if you're interested in learning more about Greenland or if you just want to read one Nordic Council Literature Prize winner. And now over to a Norwegian author I've been thinking about reading for about 20 years. So maybe the Norwegian author I've been thinking about reading for the longest. And it's Arlen Lou with Naive Super. This is a Norwegian classic, his second publication and maybe his most known book. I find it a bit difficult to describe what this book is about. And that's because it's so weird. And also the weirdness is what I enjoy. We meet a young man who is going to university. He suddenly quits. And this book is all his thoughts about everything that happens both inside him and around him. He has this one meteorologist, like weather person, which he faxes a lot. And he has a brother who is kind of a shady fellow, but he just joins along. He also has this like wooden board where you hit nails through it. And I think the most funny thing about this book is when he describes his need to just hit those nails. The first thing that struck me when I read this is that I was constantly wondering if this person had some kind of disease or a mental disability or something like that because no one really thinks or talks in the way he does. You might say he's not like everyone else, but it's also bright in his own way. As I said, he went to uni, so there has to be something there. I would just say that this book is a deep dive into a weird, weird mind. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. I laughed out several times without even knowing why sometimes. I only know Alan Lou from his first book that was filmatized. I've not read the book, but I've seen the movie. And that also is about a guy that's very weird. So I think this will be a beautiful friendship. I will certainly read more of his books. So one serious book over to a funny book and then over to a serious book again. And it's Sejan Chakar's Tante Ulrike's Vei or Aunt Ulrike's Road, which is the name of a street where two young boys of immigrant parents grew up in east part of Oslo. 
This is the place of low income and high immigration. It's about these two boys and a third person who is a researcher. The two young boys send off their cassettes with their experiences of how it is growing up in Oslo in that part of town over to this researcher and he is going to make a report. It's set in the early 2000s and 9-11 is a part of this story and how it affected the youths. I listened to this book on audiobook and it being constructed in the way it is, it was really easy to compare the two boys up against each other and oftentimes they wrote every other time to this third person so it was easy to see their differences. It felt more and more unjust throughout the novel I would say. This book is full of useless insights and Viewed from the outside, the two boys might seem a bit similar because they're both kids of immigrant parents, they're the same age, they live the same place, they went to the same school. But when you look at the family situation, for example, you can see that they're very different and where the one gets a lot of cheering from the family, the other one has to take care of the family. And this makes all the difference in the world. I really felt for the characters and I was really indulged in this story. I couldn't stop listening and I thoroughly loved it. It was especially nice to read a coming of age story from Oslo where I live in the early 2000s instead of a book set in the 1960s because there are a lot of those. So do recommend this one as well. Well, I thought I'd read another book from Cezanne Chakar and this is Gul Book or translated to Yellow Book. And here we also meet a young man of immigrant parents living in sort of the same area as the last book. But he is a bit older. So he has graduated from business school and he is struggling to find a job. But suddenly he finds a job at a department working on the state budget. Which I now have learned is called Yellow Book when you work on it. Whereas the last book is partially set around the terror attacks on 9-11. This one is partially set on the terror attacks in Oslo and around in 2011. Also where this book differs a bit is that our main character already has quite a few successes in his life. He has finished school, he's gotten a job, he has a girlfriend. A bit different novel than the other one. This you might say is a bit more nuanced. And as I've talked about in a previous video, who needs nuances? Or at least it's more gripping if things are more black and white. That's what I felt about this book as well. I did enjoy listening to it, but I did not feel that much for our main character. With these kinds of books, I feel like I have to grow really close to the main characters in order to get gripped by the story. That didn't happen with this one and the plot of the story isn't all that interesting. So this ended up being just okay. And, of course, this is the difficult second novel. With all this seriousness again, I thought I needed something easy to read. And I ended up reading David Walliams with Beast of Buckingham Palace. And this book is set in a dystopian future where evil forces is ruling England and the royal family is pretty much hiding in Buckingham Palace. And as you might have guessed, we're following this little guy, the prince, on his quest to solve a lot of issues or problems along his way. The last Williams book I read was Gangster Granny, and the thing that got me with that one was a plot twist that made me love both the characters a lot more, and also the down-to-earthness about that novel. This book, on the other hand, did not do that for me at all. As with Yellow Book, I didn't grow close to any of the characters in this novel. And that's kind of weird because it is a children's novel. Did I chuckle a lot? Yes, I did. Was I entertained? Yes, indeed. But did I love this book? No. Will I end up reading more of Williams' books? Yes, I will. I'm really finding reading children's literature more and more fun for each day that passes. Then I'm actually going to talk about my fourth audiobook this month and that's The Island by Victoria Hislop. The reason why I chose this one was because I was struggling to decide which audiobook I was going for next but there's this one person reading my favorite books and so I just went to, into her profile and found that she was reading this. I've sort of been putting this off for a bit because I thought it would be too cliche. 
Not that I don't like cliches, I really do, so that's a bit weird, but what can I do? The book is about a young woman looking into her mother's past. This leads her to Crete, an island outside of Greece, and the story evolves around a little island called Spinalonga, which earlier was a leper colony. And of course, this island has close ties to her family's past. And in the start of this book, I thought I'd made the wrong choice because I found a lot of metaphors that were really cheesy and a language that just felt a bit cheap. But also I felt like this completely changed after the first few chapters, which I do not know if it's just me accepting it or if it's a part of the novel. The historical aspect is something that I always like and I thought this would be a gruesome, gruesome book, but it turned out that it actually wasn't. Of course, a lot of sad things happened that made me almost cry, but at the same time, I thought it would be more brutal. But then again, maybe it wouldn't have been that big of a hit. But this book is about love, sickness, death, all the things that people tend to like reading about and tend to form a relationship with. It's also very easily read, so it takes off on a lot of prejudices I had against it, but I still very much enjoyed it. I gave it 4 out of 5 stars. It was a bit long at times, and a bit too much family history, I would say, and a bit repetitive. I'm glad I read this book now, because I have similar books in my shelf, or at least books that I view in the same category as I categorized this in my head earlier. So this might make it easier for me to pick those up for light summer reads. This at least felt very summery reading. Maybe because it was hot in Crete. Then over to the last and worst book I read this month, and that's The Idiot by Elif Batuman. This was actually a part of my first ever book haul, so this has been standing there for a while. And the weird thing is that when I first picked this up, I read many places that this was supposed to be funny or humorous, but then when I started reading about it again, a lot of places it just didn't say anything about humor or being funny at all, and that's why I sort of postponed reading it. It's about a daughter of Turkish immigrants that's in her first year at Harvard, and this is a coming of age story or academia or campus novel, I would say. It's basically just about her stay at campus and with her roommates, but also uh, travel abroad to Europe. But over to that fun part, because I think in order for you to find this funny, I think you have to have had read a lot of classic literature. Also, you might have to like fun with words, linguistics, and all of those things. Or maybe I just didn't get the sense of humor that this book delivered. There were several times I thought, well, this is supposed to be funny, but I didn't find it amusing. But that's just because this book feels like it's on a different academic and philosophical and intellectual level than I am. In general, I felt like this book flew over my head while it was very boring, because nothing really happened in the book, if you ask me. She's basically chasing this Ivan guy around while doing little. There's so many anecdotes and stories that just doesn't lead anywhere. I was really, really bored. Had it not been for me not finishing Midnight's Children this month, I think I would have DNF'd this one as well, but I wasn't brave enough. Suddenly DNFing two larger books in one month just felt wrong. And also in this book, our main character was very quirky and I felt like that should have been a positive, but it was just frustrating. I'm just going to say that I did not understand this book. I did not enjoy it. It felt very, very slow and disappointed. It's actually the first month where I've listened to four books and read three books. That feels kind of weird at this moment, but also feels kind of great. I've decided only to listen to audiobooks that I have standing in my shelf for a while, just to clean up the space a little bit, make it look better, more neat, and also get a lot more books in my shelf, which you all know I really enjoy. As usual, there will be links to these books in the description if you want to check any of them out. When I make these links, I try to pick the editions that I would have chosen for myself, but if you choose another edition, that doesn't matter, as long as you 
click my link first, I will get a small commission of your purchase and that will feel great. If you choose to read any of these books, I hope you enjoy them. I also want to thank you for watching my video and I hope you have a pleasant day and that July will be a great month and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!